And let me double check that that is working. Okay, that is recording. Excellent. Um, oh, good. You guys have started the uh, the attendance. If you're here, uh, please type here in chat. So that shows up so I can uh, make a, a record of that. Um, let's see. Today, we're going to go over a little bit of, um, we're going, well, we're going to go through uh, some of um, mini project five. We'll be taking a, a little bit of a look at that um, and taking a, a little bit of a look at StackCrunch. Uh, so StackCrunch is uh, very similar to Excel um, and is, uh, is created by the, the Pearson publisher, um, which is partly why we are using the Pearson online homework so that we can use StackCrunch. Um, in chapter five, we had, we had a basic introduction to some statistical uh, concepts. In chapter six and seven, we'll be continuing on with some, uh, some statistics as well and some statistical concepts. We'll be using StackCrunch, uh, particularly, mostly, I believe, uh, um, in chapter seven is where we'll mo use most of StackCrunch, but we'll be using it here and there. Uh, starting from chapter five. Um, so let let me uh, let's go to Pearson here, and let me pull up the chat. There we are. Oh, um, I guess before we before we jump into the uh, the mini project, there are a couple of things that I wanted to to mention. Um, first off. Uh, this was brought to my attention yesterday, even though it is on the on the uh, uh, the the um, schedule. <laughs> completely, completely forgot that we're at this point in the semester. But next week is spring break, so there are no classes next week, and classes will resume the week after. So there are no classes next week. Um, that being the case, any of the homework that was due this weekend, I'm just going to extend to next weekend instead. Um, technically, uh, you should be able to have it all done and finish it before you go on spring break, whatever it is you're doing for spring break. Um, but I've been a student before. I'm not going to uh, pretend that I that I haven't been, and pretend that students don't sometimes put things off. So we'll we'll extend the due date for those. Um, I was also looking at the uh, chapter four scores. And I was thinking I am going to extend those to be due this next week, uh, not not this weekend, but next weekend as well. Um, so I think there were some there were some uh, struggles with that. So I'm going to reopen the chapter four. If you have already used all your submissions, uh, just let me know that you need more submissions, and I'll add more submissions um, so that you can submit more if you need to with the chapter four. Um, Right. So uh, for the chapter four mini project, um, I might extend that as well. Um, let me let me take another look at at those two questions, questions four and five. Let me make a note to myself, and maybe we can go over those. If you already finished the chapter four homework and the uh, mini project, do you have to do them over again or, or is that okay? Uh, no, you, you don't have to do them over if you don't want to. Um, if you want to redo those and try and get a better score, that's fine. But if you're, if you're fine with the score you got, then you don't have to do anything with it. Um, so just, just opening that up, um, for those that, that want to. Um, yeah, so let me look at the mini project, uh, mini project four at, at those questions, four and five. Um, can, can you send me an email to remind me that I, that I mentioned that uh, during lecture and that way I will make sure that I won't forget, uh, even though I made myself a note. I sometimes misplace my notes. Um, okay, 
So I, I don't think there are any other questions. I'll keep my eye on, on chat. Uh, and then for the last part of, of today, we're actually going to be looking at the um, theme two project. So um, there were two students, let me double check my, yeah, two students that requested um, to be in solo groups so far. Uh, so I've put those students in solo groups and the rest I have put into randomized groups on web campus. Um, just be aware for maybe this first week, uh, I might have to rearrange those depending on, on attendance and if students might decide they wanna be in a solo group, but um, for the most part, those groups have been set. So we'll be, I'll be uh, telling you what those group assignments were and we'll go from there. Hold on one second here, let me Uh, all right, so the first thing, let's let's uh, look at mini project five. So here we are on, uh, and the stack crunch. Let's, I guess we'll start with stack crunch. Uh, so here we are on the uh, uh, web, not web campus, Pearson website. And you'll notice here on the left-hand side, uh, when you look down, some of these won't be visible to you, like this, these, these three tabs, since that's uh, assign, um, not assignment, is the uh, lecture, lecture uh, tabs only. But there's one right here that says TechCrunch. So I'm going to open that. So when you click on that, uh, no, let's try that again. Click on StackCrunch. It'll look like this. So you're going to hit start the StackCrunch website. Um, of course, you know this is by Pearson, so they're they're um, promoting it here. If you want to purchase access to it outside of the course, but probably don't need that. So just click on the start StackCrunch web page. It's going to pull up a new tab, and then open StackCrunch right here, the uh, yellow orange button, and it's going to pull up a new tab. And let me close some of those. So this is this is StackCrunch, and uh, StackCrunch. You can see uh, uh, the setup here. It looks a lot like an Excel spreadsheet, because um, it is kind of based off of Excel, but it has a lot of uh, tools, useful tools for statistics that we'll be using. Um, so that's where you can find StackCrunch. Uh, with the homework, let's actually let's open up some of the homework first before we go into the mini project five. Uh, let's open up, say, homework 5C. So if I open up homework 5C, a lot of these you won't need StackCrunch at all. Even for the ones that you can use StackCrunch for, you probably won't need it. Um, so here, but but I want to show you this for, for future uh, sections for future assignments. Uh, since again, we're going to be using StackCrunch mostly in chapter six and very much in chapter seven. So uh, take, for example, here in, in uh, homework 5C, this is question eight. And so you can see that we're given uh, some uh, data set here. You'll notice on the side of the data set, there is this uh, blue. I don't see anything but your homework listing. Oh, uh, thanks for letting me know. Let me try and fix that. Oh, Okay, I see what the, oh, all right. Apologize for that. I don't know why it did that. Now, hopefully, can you can you see the uh, homework now? Is that showing up? Hopefully. All I see is homework 4A. So, oh, now it's changed to 5C23. Yeah, okay. It, so it was it was just a little bit of, of lag there. I don't know why, but that's all right. Okay, good. Thank you for letting me know. All right. Glad that we got that working. Okay, um, so when when you um, when you have a data set like this, you'll see right here on the right side uh, is this kind of a blue box. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. This uh, blue double box. 
if you click on that, there should be an option that says open in StackCrunch. And if you click that, it'll open up a new window. So I might have to switch that here. Yep, I do. Uh, so then it will open up this window here that now has this uh, data set in StackCrunch. So uh, you could, if you wanted to open up um, your own StackCrunch window and type these in automatically, but uh, if you click on that blue box and then open in StackCrunch, it will enter the data for you. And then from here, we can go to stat and we can go to summary stats or tables and uh, get any kind of our statistical information that we want. So if we go to take, for example, tables and frequency, oh, have to choose the, vari the variable column, then this gives us our frequency table. So one nice thing that we can use there. Okay, so let me close that window and, oh, let me go back to the homework. Okay, so again, that's that, that uh, blue box button right there. That will, uh, you click on that, open in StackCrunch and it'll open up a StackCrunch window with that data. Okay, and let me close that and let's open up um, mini project five then. Well, can, uh, can you, when you have the homework open, would Stack Cr Crunch be on a separate page that, so that you could answer the homework off of Stack Crunch? Because otherwise, you um, might have remembering all those 20 different variables. Oh, no, yeah, it, it, it does. It opens up in another window. Uh, that's, why, <laughs> that's why Zoom didn't switch, because it opened it up in a separate window. Um, oh. So I had to switch here, because I, I wasn't aware that it, that it wasn't connected there. Yeah, so it'll open it up in a, so you'll have two separate windows, which unfortunately I can't show on Zoom, but it will, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so it's a, a little bit better than what you're seeing here. Um, I'm sure there's probably a way to make Zoom do that, but uh, that's probably a little bit beyond my uh, techn technological abilities. Uh, did I open up? I didn't, okay. Uh, so mini project five, let's open that up. Okay, so I have that in, in a new window here. And so again, um, what I would do, um, this isn't showing many project five, but it is hopefully shows stack crunch right now. Um, what I would do is open up stack crunch and put this in its own separate window um, and then have the two side by side, which again, I would want to show, uh, but I'm not sure quite how to do that uh on but zoom you just oh i mean you can just if you just create a new like window you can just drag it to like you can just click the top uh part of the window like where it shows the extra tab and you can just drag it to the side and then it'll make it go side by side on one of the other windows oh no yeah i mean uh, thanks <laughs> i i did that but it's not displaying the entire screen so if i let me click here to share and it's only sharing the one window i have the mini project five here and I have my stack crunch open here. Uh, can you share your whole <laughs> screen? Or is it just only letting um, you share your window? It's, it's only letting me share the window. Yeah, um, I don't see the... I can try sharing my screen if you want me to show them how to do it. Um, actually, there is an advanced tab. Let me see if that... Nope, that doesn't have what I want. Um, hmm. Might have to, maybe I'll see if I can make an, uh, a separate video here, uh, but I think this will work for now. If it, if it becomes too much of a problem, then, then I'll, I'll, we'll uh, jump to that. Thank you. Um, but I think we only need it, we only need it really for this first one. Uh, the rest of these, you'll be opening up the uh, data using the StackCrunch link. So, um, so this for, for this first one, uh, StackCrunch can generate random numbers, which we're going to use for um, 
uh, chapter seven, because in chapter seven, we would do things like roll, roll a six sided die uh, several times and then record the number. And um, when we did that in class, I would had, I, I have six sided die, I would pass out. But since we can't do that, um, and you might not have a six sided die or might not have the patience to roll it to say 20 times, uh, then we can use StackCrunch to, to generate those numbers. So um, this first question, I think it has parts A through D uh, that will walk through how to generate different types of random numbers. Uh, and the link here, if you click here, this shows the, uh, what the window looks like. Uh, hopefully it's sharing that. Yeah. Um, so this is what the window looks like when you are generating something on StackCrunch. So it goes through and, and tells you what, what to do uh there but let's let's go to the stack crunch window that i have and again i apologize for this i'm gonna maybe see if i can make a video on its own um to show both of these windows side by side uh but what you're going to do here um uh let's see you're going to go to uh, data, I believe. Yeah, data, simulate. So this is a simulation of various different types of uh, statistical distributions, which we'll, we'll get into. But what we want is uniform. Uh, uniform distribution is basically like rolling a, a single uh, six-sided die, or I guess you can make it however many sides you want. Uh, now, in in the uh, the question, we want uh, to generate ten random numbers. So here, when it says number of rows and columns, we're going to say I want ten rows and one column. So that will generate ten numbers for me. If I if I do more than ten, then obviously that'll be more than ten, and I'd just take the first ten. Um, but that's that's how many numbers it's generating. Uh, and I guess you can increase the number of columns as well. Um, so it's going to make that, um, have that option for you. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do, usually you don't change this, but you'll notice about halfway down the options here is something that says seeding. Uh, whenever you have a random, gem, uh, random generator, whether it's generating numbers or other things in a computer system, you have what is called a seed for that, for that, uh, for that generator. And that usually you use a dynamic seed, which then pulls the microseconds at the time that you click. Um, but if you use a fixed seed, if you pick, if you pick a seed, um, then it, the numbers it generates will always be the same. So here in the directions, it tells you to use seed 12, uh, 450. And that way it will generate the same numbers so it can check to make sure that you've generated those numbers correctly. And this will always also um, do rounding for you if you want to round. And I think here, let me go back to, I'm, I'm, I have the mini project five here on the side, but I'm just gonna read through it. Uh, generate 10 numbers, round it to three, three decimal places. You're gonna click on the number of decimal places and choose three. And then you're going to hit compute. And it'll tell us that that's been generated. And then here are the 10 numbers round it to three decimal places. So then you would type these in to the, uh, to the text box with a comma between each one. Um, so that's generating those numbers. And on each step, it should have a dialog box that you can open up um, to help you through that. And I think what I'll try to do is also make a video uh, showing that. So in this case, we're supposed to use the fixed, not the not the dynamic. Yes, that is correct. So um, when when you are when we're in chapter seven, simulating a die roll, you'll use dynamic. But um, for the homework, if we're generating something, we'll use a fixed seed because then it can it will always generate the same numbers and it can then uh, verify your your uh, solution. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so let me switch back to the mini project window. Uh, so that's question five. So the first one is going to be generating random numbers between zero and one. 
And um, I believe on parts either C or D, you're going to be generating whole numbers. So instead of the uh, instead of rounding to a certain number of decimal places, you'll choose decimal places as zero, and then it'll be a whole number. Um, so that's question one. Uh, the rest of these questions. Uh, so on question two, you'll click here. You'll notice that it gives you a data set, and then it has um, some questions like a line chart here. Uh, so again, what you would do is you would click on, on that little blue box next to the data here, open in StackCrunch, and let me switch to that StackCrunch screen. And then we can go from data, um, well, I guess here graph, we want a line graph. Uh, let's see, where is our line graph here? Well, I guess we could do a histogram. That would work. Oh, we have to choose the percentage below, not the year, okay. And so then that gives us our line graph or so there should be should be a line graph here. I think I'll I think I will um, I think I will do another video with this uh, where I'll go through and. Well, what is the bar plot? Could that be a line graph? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the 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 only difference between these is the the line graph is just connecting the points on the top and would connect those with the line. So there would be a point here and then a line, a point here and then a line, but it would look- Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it would look like this. Have this. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a way to do that. Um, well, I'm, I'm a little confused as how we're supposed to do this for the homework. How does how do we get the homework? How do we put it in the homework, that graph? Oh, um, so actually what you're, let me, let me switch to the other window. Uh, you're you're just wanting to match the data with with the line graph. So, you could either uh, graph these by hand, or you could have uh, the uh, StackCrunch graph it for you, and then just match which one it was. Oh, and whichever one seems to match what you find, you you put that letter. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I think yeah, I think I will do another video where I. It, make sure I can get these side by side. Um, question three here uh, is looking at some data. So this one has some extra data. Uh, so you can click this icon to view the data and it pulls up this. Uh, let me make sure, are you guys seeing the data here that says football players and has these two columns, position and age? I've seen it. Okay, um, so then once you once you pull that up, uh, next right next to it has the the double blue box things you can open in StackCrunch, and so then again it will input it into StackCrunch, and on this one let's let's hold on, I need to move these windows so I can see what we're doing. Um, make a bar graph of the ages of the players, so then you would go to your StackCrunch window. Here, uh, you would say I want a graph. I want a bar plot with data, and I want the age. So you uh, select age, and then compute, and there's our bar graph. So then you would go back to uh, the mini project five, and again this would be in a separate window. So you'd have these windows side by side, and you could uh, easily match which bar graph matches. And I think that is most of most of these. Oh, and okay. So for one more one more thing here, um, sometimes there is uh, there are shared data sets, and that's what they're doing with this one. So uh, let me open up my StackCrunch window here that I have and get that ready. Um, so go ahead and read through here. We're going to open the StackCrunch shared data set called Arctic Sea Ice Volume. Okay, so that's that's what we want. 
Okay. And my window froze. I think I I think I broke it with StatCrunch. Hold on one second. Let me open that back up. StatCrunch. There it is. Open that. Okay. All right, let's try that one more time. So we are here. Oh, I lost the mini project five. Okay, hold on one second. Let me stop the share while I get that fixed. Mini project five. So mini project five is just going to be this one on on the uh, on Pearson instead of on on web campus. Okay, uh, I think we are here. Let me let's go back to that. Mini project five. There we go. Okay, so this one we're looking at the shared data set called Arctic Ice Sea Volume. So I'm going to copy that. So that's what the data set is called. Once we have um, StackCrunch open, we're going to go to data, load, and shared data sets. So let's go to our StackCrunch page. There it is. So we go to data, load, and then shared data sets is down here almost at the very bottom. Click on that. And in the search, you'll paste the Arctic IC volume. And there it is right there. So you click on that. And it opens, opens up the C volume with all of these uh, bar graphs already open. So we can close those. And then from there, you'll do what, what StackCrunch is asking for. And if you go to one th one nice thing about StackCrunch um, is that when you when you generate results, it uh, you the, you don't close the results even if you hit the X button. It just minimizes those. So if you look at the StackCrunch menu, the, you'll see that there are results here, ten hidden, because I closed all of those windows as they popped up. But if I want to see one of those, like uh, summary stats for March, then I click on that. And it'll bring up that uh, box. This one, I guess it maximized it. And I lost, there it is. Here, here's the window. Or if I want to look at, say, the histogram for March, then I'll click on that and it'll pull up the histogram. Uh, and then if I close it, or if I close the wrong one, I can, again, just go to StackCrunch and results. Because it doesn't close the window, it just minimizes it. And that's where you find it. So then I can get histogram from March, and then it has those results. So um, that's what we're, we'll be doing. I don't that follow. What are you supposed to do with that? Uh, let's take a look. So the first one, you're going to uh, make multiple line charts for March and September. It's going to, I guess, basically follow the directions here, make a line chart for March and September. I think I will do a video on, on how to do that. So um, I just kind of wanted to introduce where the StackCrunch window was. I wasn't aware that it wouldn't let me do both windows side by side. But um, so for this first part, for part A, you're going to make a line chart for March and September. Um, but again, I, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll make a separate video for this because uh, I want to show both windows side by side. So I'll figure out how to do that with Zoom and then record a video with that. So you can see both the, the question and the stack crunch side, because that will make a lot more sense than what we have here. Um, OK. Uh, so I think that will I think that will help once I make the video uh, should should be better. Um, the rest of this again is just pulling information from from the data and doing it on StackCrunch. So let's close that and maybe 
I might I might even extend the due date for the mini project five as well. Okay. Uh, so let's go now to the theme two project. Okay. Um, so our theme two project, we scroll down. I created a module for it here. Uh, so here's the PDF uh, document that has the instructions. We'll be going through that. Um, and also we'll, I think we'll have some time to start meeting in groups today. So we'll, we'll start that as well, group work. Um, let's see. Uh, so let's go to that. All right. Let me move these windows so I can actually scroll down and select things. So the first first page is kind of basically just what um, what is used in here. So here, chapters four through six. I think this is mostly chapter four. We'll be we'll be looking at uh, scenario provided. So we're going to there's going to be a life scenario. Um, let's actually, I think we should look at the life scenario first. So the life scenario, and I'm going to send out an email, both an email and make a page on this that will have um, this information. But the scenario for this, for this project, uh, we're going to have a four person family. So there'll be two adults and two children. Uh, the children have to be dependent, so no older than 17. Um, uh, you can decide the the age and the gender of both children. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, the annual gross income of this family is $120,000. So for, take for example, if both adults are, are working, we're going to assume that uh, together they make 100, uh, as a family, so as a unit, they make $120,000 per year. Uh, the credit score is gonna be 690 and money and savings will be $10,000. So this is our life scenario. So we have a four person family, again, two adults, two children. The children are dependents. So have to be 17 years of age or younger, but I'll let you decide the age and the gender. Uh, annual gross income for the family is 120,000 uh, per year. So yeah, annual. Uh, credit score 690 and money and savings $10,000. So that is the scenario provided. And um, isn't six ninety? Is that is that a good score? Isn't it? Uh, that's a that's a decently good score. It's not the best, but it's it's pretty good. Yeah. What's the good score? What's the best? I, score? I think the best score. Uh, they put me on the spot. I think it's seven. I want to say eighty, but I don't think that's entirely correct. Oh, eight fifty from the chat. Eight fifty. Okay. Wow. Uh, eight fifty. <laughs> I guess so. Six ninety. I think is. <laughs> Is decent, but not not the best. Um, I should know more about that, but I, I I just knew it was it was fairly decent. It's not bad, but it's not the best. But it's looking like eight fifty is is eight fifty the best? Do you do you guys know? Okay, is the best. Okay, so eight fifty is the best. So yeah, six ninety is not is not bad, but it's not not the best. Eight fifty. So 700 and above is pretty good. Anything above 800 is really good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, that I should have I should have done my homework before and <laughs> been prepared to answer that question. Um, but thank you for for that chat uh, class. I know you guys always have my back there. All right. Uh, so let's look at the questions. So so this mini this not mini project this group project going to be looking at first buying a house. So this family is looking to buy a house, this four person family. Um, and then uh, after the house, buying the house portion, you're going to look at making a, uh, what does their monthly budget look like? So uh, make something that is close, relatively close to accurate. So uh, food budget, um, rent, utilities, things like that. Uh, but let's, let's just start at, at the top. 
Um, so again, these questions, one through, I believe there are eight questions here, what I'm going to be looking at, but I'm going to make some adjustments to this. Like I said, I think some of these I'm going to make not as intensive and some will, we might just skip completely. Um, but the first question one is, what is the price range of the home you will search for? Um, and I think that one, I think that one I might either skip or uh, give you an idea of what what price range I would want you guys to search for. Um, believe, yeah, so uh, there's a Zillow home affordability calculator. Maybe we'll use we'll use that collectively as a class just to make life easy. Um, question two is a big one. So question two, I do want you to uh, to answer not necessarily parts A through D, but um, choose, choose a search criteria for your new home, okay? So we have we have four adults, oh no, sorry, four people in the family, two adults, two children. And again, I'll let you decide the gender. Let's say that there, it one is male, one is female. So then how many rooms do you need? Well, I'm gonna say hopefully at least three, one for the two adults, one for the girl, one for the boy, or, how many, uh, how many rooms do you want? Let's say one of the adults works from home and wants a home office, then you would need four rooms uh, or want four rooms, maybe not necessarily need, but want four rooms. Um, location, I don't care as much about, though you can go into that if you want. Uh, do you want neighborhood amenities? So do you want a community pool? Do you want a park nearby? Um, do you want one story or two story house or, um, does that matter? If that doesn't matter, then that's, you know, you can skip that part. Um, although I guess you could, you could uh, fill in some details if you want to say, make, uh, make one of the adults not able to climb staircases and you'd say, well, I want, uh, this house has to be one story. Um, but I'll leave that again, I'll leave those details up to you. So the search criteria, I guess mostly what I'm what I'm concerned on are the number of rooms and the square footage. What what are the number of rooms that you need? What are the number of rooms that you would want? And those don't necessarily have to be the same. So um, let's say if if both of the kids are female or male, they can share a room. So you could say, well, I need two rooms, but I would like four rooms. Let's say if both of the adults are working from home, hopefully uh, they can both get their own home office. Uh, how many bathrooms do you do you want? Uh, what is the square footage? Do you want it to be large or small? Do you need a yard? Um, does the family have a pet that needs a yard? Um, and how big of a yard would you need? I guess that would depend on the pet that you have. Um, so number two, choose a, choose a search criteria for the house. Three, perform a search criteria on Zillow.com or Realtor.com. Um, to look for a house, let's say in Vegas. So we're going to pretend that this family is moving uh, to a different, to, to a house in Vegas. It's going to search on Zillow, which are houses that are currently on the market and see if there is one that matches, that, that matches the search criteria. So has the, the number of rooms that you need and hopefully the number of rooms that you want um, that is within the, the price range that, that will decide on. I think that I'll possibly send out the price range. Um, can you find a house in Las Vegas that, that matches that criteria? Uh, if not, then you're going to have to adjust your price range or your criteria. Um, so again, let's say if you, if you really want four rooms, but you need two rooms and you can't find a house that has four rooms, but you find one that has three rooms, then you're going to have to go with that instead. So just like it, as if you were moving to a new house in Las Vegas. And then when you find that house, a house that works, that met, that matches the criteria and budget, then you're going to say that that is your contract house or, uh, well, I guess I, I prefer the word reference house. I use those two words interchangeably in this, in this uh, theme, contract house, reference house. So you're going to pretend like that is the house you're, that this family is buying. Um, so once you find that house, I would uh, write down the location, write down the price of the house, how much does it cost, uh, write down 
you know, how many rooms does it have? What's the square footage? And if you, if it's on Zillow, um, definitely, if you can include a link. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Question from the chat is this, this is the group project for theme two. Yes, this is the group, the group project. Um, so that's question three. Uh, question four, you're going to decide on a loan for this house. And for this, I want you to do just two, uh, the, the, the two uh, parts A and B, two first parts. Research the current rates of, of that credit score. So with a credit score of 690, what, what is a, 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 a rate that you would get on, on the loan or the mortgage? And then what type of loan, uh, 30 versus 15 year? Uh, we're going to assume that it's, um, that it's going to be a fixed rate and then it's an amortized loan. So you're paying the same amount each month. Um, so uh, what's up for you to decide is 15 years versus 30 years uh, with that rate that you found in part A. Oh, and I guess C will do as well. Calculate your monthly payment. We'll use the payment formula, the loan payment formula. Because again, we want to we wanna try and stick to what we learned since we're only looking at amortized or... Um, yeah, the amortized loans, then we're going to assume that it's an amortized loan, has a fixed rate, whatever that rate is for the 690 credit score. Uh, and you get to decide 30 or 15 years. Um, five, we're going to skip completely. I don't need the amortization schedule. Uh, six, determine your startup costs. So on six, you're going to say, all right, um, do I need to rent a moving truck? Does a f this family need to rent a moving truck? Or do they possibly have friends that have a truck or do they own a truck themselves so they don't necessarily have to rent that? Do they need to hire movers? Or uh, let's say if the kids are fairly young, two to five, they might not be able to help lift things. You might need to hire movers to help you move the, the large objects. Or you can say, well, maybe I want the, the kids in this family to be teenagers so they can help help uh, move the, the big stuff. So I don't necessarily need movers. Um, and then from, from Zillow, is there any, any repair work that needs done on the house? Um, and so you'll decide how, all right, if I need to rent a truck, how much does it cost to rent that uh, moving truck? Um, if, I if I have to hire movers, how much does, how much does it cost to hire movers? Uh, and then how much does it cost to repair? So any of, the, uh, any of those startup costs. Okay. Where do you find the, that stuff? Well, so if you're, um, once you decide on the age and the gender of the, of the, of the kids, uh, then I will leave it up to you to decide if you, if you want to have them rent a truck. And if you do, then you would look on um, current rates of how much does it cost to rent a truck, like say from uh, U-Haul. From Anna. where to where? Oh, good question. Um, let's say from so you're going to uh, go to the the um, the new house's address, and then uh, I would pick from from where are you coming though? Where are you moving from? Let's say from Las Vegas. So I what I would pick I would pick a. We don't want we don't want anyone to give their address. Uh, so let's pick just a random cross street. Any any random cross street that's that's oh. um, in, like in Vegas. Let's say uh, now that I'm put on the spot, I can never think of one. Uh, Flamingo and does that cross with Maryland? Yes. So say from the crossroads Flamingo in Maryland to the address of this new house, or whichever cross street you you like the best. Maybe one in Henderson if you're moving from Henderson. Um, so just a, a general idea there. But moving within uh, Las Vegas to Las Vegas. So um, in that case, you may not even need to rent a truck. Again, if the family has, if one of the adults owns a truck or has a friend that has a truck, then maybe you can bribe your friends with pizza. And then just uh, pizza for your friends would be the, the move, moving cost. Um, and again, so if you want, if you need to, if you decide you need to to hire uh, movers, you'd look at how much does it cost to hire movers for say one day or one hour. What are their hourly rates? Um, and so six, depending on how you um, how you work it, you might not even have any 
or very little startup cost. It might just be the amount of gas that you use that day. Uh, so we'll say maybe a full tank or two of gas moving back and forth. Um, Okay, so that's the that's the first part. So one through six, and again, we're skipping five, uh, is finding a house and figuring out how much it costs to move there and how much the rent will be, uh, not the rent, the mortgage, the loan payment will be per month. Then seven and eight is kind of a generalization of, all right, with this scenario, so again, this, this uh, family is making $120,000 per year, the, the whole family. Um, so you're going to look at, all right, what are the monthly bills? So what would the food budget be? What is the utility? So power, water, um, are there any, any extras? So are they paying for cable? How much does that cost? Are they paying for internet? How much does that cost? Um, things like transportation. So maybe how much does, you know, the insurance cost for the car? How much does the uh, uh, gas cost per month? For the car. And so you're going to come up with a monthly budget uh, and cash flow. So you're going to have the 120,000, um, I guess, divided by 12 minus whatever the, the expenses are per month. And then you're going to summarize, is, is this a sustainable lifestyle for this family? So that's question eight. So is, is the, is the, uh, Oh, sorry, I see another question in chat. Uh, do they have to buy a house or can they rent a house? And for the pur purposes of this project, they have to buy a house. Um, I think if you want, I, I last, last semester, I think it was last semester, maybe two semesters ago, uh, a student decided to find one that was, what, what was that called? My brain is, my, co co my caffeine is not quite kicked in yet. Um, Foreclosed, so the the price of the house was a lot smaller. Um, or rent to own, good, yeah, rent to own would work as well. Um, but probably just buying outright would be easier. Um, but yeah, the, it has to be purchased, not not just renting. Um, but if, if you find something that is, uh, take for example, like they found last, a couple of semesters ago, something that was foreclosed, so the price was a lot cheaper than than regular market then that's fine too if you want to use that house as long as it meets it as long as it meets your search criteria so if you say you need two rooms then it has to have at least two rooms um okay so back to eight so uh, is this a sustainable lifestyle uh are you comfortable with what you need or want so you know um let's say your budget your budget does not in, or includes everything that you would want, but your cash flow is negative, then obviously you're going to be in a bad situation that would not be sustainable. So you'd have to adjust adjust that. So um, uh, are you able to save each month? So again, that comes back to cash flow. Do you have a positive or negative cash flow? Is your 120,000 gross or net, you know, before or after taxes? Uh, after taxes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and the last part of eight, if you have a hard time making it, then decide what it would take. Uh, so what, what adjustments would need to be made to, to make a, a more comfortable lifestyle for this family? And we're, we're including, uh, we wanna do a realistic thing. So nothing like winning the lottery. Um, so, and that's, that's the project. So um, first part, questions one through six, buying a house, finding a house in Las Vegas that this family would buy. And then uh, the last part, seven and eight, what is the monthly budget and cash flow for this family? And is this sustainable uh, if they purchase this house? So uh, would, are they living comfortably? Um, do they have everything that they want or need? Do they need to adjust their budget? Do they need to maybe not get, not have cable or not have internet? Uh, something like that to, to make this affordable? Um, and that's that's the that's the project. Okay. So let's let's go to the um, schedule really quickly, the class course schedule. Um, and I'm going to so I am going to both send out 
an email announcement with the uh, scenario, with the life scenario. And also, I'm going to create a page. Uh, so when you scroll down to the module here, to the uh, theme two uh, project group project module, there's going to be a page here that will have the life scenario as well. So I'm going to be uploading that tonight and sending out that, that email tonight. So you'll have that information. Um, and before I split you into groups, I'll give you that information again. Um, but let's go to the schedule uh, for our course currently. Uh, so here is our schedule. And again, I need to fix those dates. Uh, so next week, so this is this week, the 11th of March, finish chapter five. Um, next week is no school because that is our spring break. The week after that, week after spring break is chapter six. And then the following week, so two weeks after spring break is our exam. So our exam is going to be, I think, again, that is one day off. That should be April 1st. Um, yeah, April 1st is the Thursday. So that Sunday, April 4th, is when this project is going to be due um, for right now. And if we need to extend that date, we can. But I think, I think, we'll, I think we might be all right with that. So we'll, we'll, we'll aim for that. So as of right now, unless you hear from me otherwise, this is due Sunday, April 4th at 11.59 PM. So the week, uh, the Sunday, the weekend after the exam. OK. And I did generate the groups randomly. Oh, I need to stop the share for a moment because I have to switch, uh, switch the things here. Give me just one second while I switch that. Oh, yeah. And my computer is yelling at me. That's all right. Um, so if you click on the people uh, tab um, in Web Campus, then it will have the uh, theme two uh, project groups created. There is one change I have to make because um, I was informed by one student they want to be in a single group. So let me fix that really quickly. OK, uh, so now let me share this. So here are the groups for the theme two project. Uh, let me read these out and then we'll create breakout rooms and you can meet with your um, with your group really quickly uh, before we end today. Um, and let me stop the recording here because that's we're basically just meeting in, in groups from here on out. So let me uh, stop. Professor, I'm sorry, I had a question. Um, yes. Being that we now know what the project